say to you that there is an electric field here. I will use induction. I have two ping pong balls painted with conducting paint. They touch each other. Under influence of this electric field, this one will become negative and this one will become positive. We've discussed that last time. You create a dipole. It's not important that it is a dipole. I separate the two. I have negative charge here and positive charge there. I will touch any one of these two balls, it doesn't matter which one, with the electroscope, and you will see that there is charge there. So I have demonstrated then that there is an electric field outside that sphere. Now I will do exactly the same demonstration, but now I put these two conducting balls inside. So here they are. I touch them. You just have to tr trust me that I really will touch them. And then I will take them out. And if I didn't make a mistake, if I didn't touch the rim by accident, then I will show you that there is no electric field inside. It means there is no induction. So these balls did not pick up charge. I show you with the electroscope that indeed there is no charge on it. So that is the way I want to do this. So there's the electroscope. Here's the sphere. And the way I'm going to charge it has a nice name. It's called electrophorus. Hard to pronounce. I first rub a glass plate with cat fur. Then I take a metal plate, I put it on top, and I touch it with my finger. And now I transfer charge. And you think about it, why that is. I put it on here again, touch it again with my finger. I'm again charging it. Put it on top, touch it again with my finger. I want a little bit more charge, so I'm rubbing this again. Put this on top touch it with my finger. Every time I do that, I feel a little shock. Put it on there. Touch it with my finger. Okay, let's hope that's enough. So now comes demonstration number one. These two spheres, conducting, completely discharged. I bring them close to this sphere. There they are. I separate them. So now they must have picked up charge. Shall I use this one or this one to touch the electroscope? The same to me. My right hand or my left hand? Who wants right? Who wants left? The right ones have it. And there's the charge. So I've shown you that there is an electric field there. Through induction, I've created charge on here. Now I'll do the same inside. It's always tricky because if I hit, if I hit the rim, then it's not zero. This one has to go in first because the opening is too small. Then the second one has to come in. Now I have to touch them. And I really do. I wouldn't cheat on you. Not this time. They are now in contact with each other. And now I take one out. And I take the other out. Which one shall I touch it? There shouldn't be any charge on either one of them. We had left before or we had right before? Well, let's do this one. This one? Who is for left? Who is for right? The lefts have it. Oh! <laughs> what happened? I must have touched the side. There's no way around it. I'll make sure that there's enough charge on it. I'll charge it once more. Discharge them. Okay, we'll do it again. Go inside. Go inside. I touch them. Take it out. Take it out. Nothing. Nothing. Maybe teeny weeny little bit. Well, the electric field inside is not necessarily exactly zero, but it's extremely close. The last thing I want to show you has to do with the fringe field that we have seen here. I have here two parallel plates 
which I'm going to charge with an instrument that we have not seen before, which is called the uh, a Wimhurst. If I rotate this crank, I can produce positive and negative charge, and this plate becomes positively charged, and the other plate automatically becomes negatively charged. And I'm going to show this to you right there. That's the idea. Yeah, we'll make it. Uh... So there you see these two plates, and you see a ping pong ball. And this ping pong ball is a conductor. We put conducting paint on it. And remember when I did the demonstration with the balloon, which bounced between my head and the Van de Graaff, and every time that it bounced on the Van de Graaff, it took all the charge of the Van de Graaff, and when it bounced on my head, it took my charge, and so it went back and forth along the field lines. And that is what I want to show you now, that this ping pong ball will start to probe that field first outside the capacitor, or I shouldn't use the word capacitor, but these plates, and then I will bring the ping pong ball inside, and then you will see that the field is much stronger there. So let's first get some charge on there. And listen to the sound. Every time that it hit, hits, it bangs. So it's following almost those field lines. And in doing that, it's actually transferring charge every time from one plate to the other. So it's nicely going around in an arc, the way you see it there. So it's clear that there is an electric field outside. I've proven that to you. Otherwise, it would never do what it's doing. So the electric field outside is not exactly zero. Of course not. This plate is not infinitely large. And now I will bring this ping pong ball inside. I have to open up the, the gap a little. And I will bring it inside. And you see the field is much stronger. Now it's going back and forth between those very high density field lines, very strong electric field, going back and forth each time that it hits the plate, it, can, it changes polarity, and this is not too different from the experiment I did with the balloon when I bounced it back from the Van de Graaff to my head and back to the Van de Graaff. Okay, stop working on that assignment. It's not an easy assignment this week. See you Wednesday. <laughs>